Since 2015, uh, the thermal physiology team has been visiting the Marine Corps Mount Werther Training Center up in Bridgeport, California. And we've conducted several different types of research projects, all surrounded around answering questions related to uh, performance in the colds, whether that be cold water immersion, um, looking at rewarming strategies, different perspectives within that realm. Throughout the past several years, the thermal physiology team has partnered with the cold weather medicine class. And as part of that cold weather medicine class, the students in the class undergo what's called a hypothermia lab, uh, which is a special training evolution where they get the enviable experience of jumping into a frozen pond for 10 minutes and then trying to recover from that cold so that naval healthcare providers can experience firsthand uh, what happens when someone is experiencing uh, hypothermia. Most recently, we looked at different strategies for rewarming, specifically looking at two different types of exercise intensity and comparing their effects uh, on rewarming. My role with the project was to uh, help develop the protocol uh, and then to administer the protocol to uh, participants in the study. In 2022, last year, uh, we were uh, contacted by the Mount Warfare Training Center and were asked to um, assist with a project uh, looking at um, uh, potential decrements in marine uh, health and performance and readiness uh, during a four-week field training event, which they call the mountain exercise. So these Marines are exposed to austere environments as they learn how to perform mountain warfare operations. So some of the environments that they're exposed to include uh, extreme temperatures, high altitude, fatigue due to sustained training operations, both from the physical side and from the mental side. Um, there's a lot of cognitive load that happens and cognitive tasking that happens as well, where they have to do route finding and difficult terrain and things like that. The people who, who start the training course, don't 10 to 12% do not finish. And so that's typically because of medical reasons. And so they might suffer from frostbite while they're out in the field. They um, have non-freezing cold injuries, so things like trench foot, um, those are all possibilities that they'll see. And so 10 to 12% of those that start don't finish, that's you know, not a good thing, that's cause for concern. Uh, what we all thought was really interesting was that they had seen that um, the Marines typically lose about 20 to 30 pounds in four weeks. And if you're losing weight, of course, you're losing muscle mass. If you're losing muscle mass, then the risk for musculoskeletal injuries is there. Um, and that really is what shaped our project. This was a um, really interesting project. And one thing that I was really excited about is the fact that we have six of the primary investigators in the department all collaborating on this study so that we can get a holistic picture of warfighter performance in austere environments. That includes the, uh, the thermal physiology team, uh, our fuel, which is our nutrition team. Um, we had our uh, physical and cognitive readiness team, or our, our FICOR team. We had our expeditionary cognitive science team. Um, we had our A team, which uh, is a, a stress physiology team. And then we had our sleep and fatigue team. And so each of these teams uh, performed different measurements over the, the course of the mountain exercise uh, across these different data collections. So the, uh, the thermal physiology team, we evaluated heart rate, oxygen saturation, to look at uh, high altitude acclimatization and the process as they were uh, up in the mountains for several weeks. Um, we also looked at hydration status. We measured uh, different stress responses to a, a questionnaire, so how the, the stress of the exercise was impacting the Marines, and then different types of coping strategies. For the winter mountain exercise, we looked at the cold-induced vasodilation response, or what we call the CIVD response, and that is a, uh, a response that's been used to sort of get uh, some insights into frostbite risk. And so because these Marines were gonna be exposed to cold for four weeks and living out in the environment, we wanted to try and see if we could do some measurements of uh, cold-induced vasodilation and dexterity. So what we're doing is we're taking all of this information that we gathered from the six different research teams with six different expertise, 
all of this information, we're taking it and we're putting it into a booklet that can serve as a deliverable for the Mountain Warfare Training Center instructors and the students and the leadership. These are the, the different contributing factors and that create a better deployable Marine. And that's what matters. That's what we are trying to do here. That's what we're trying to accomplish.